Hi and welcome back to the Business Career College video series. In this particular video we're going to look at the use of trusts in disability planning. And there is a fair bit to this. This video is going to go through a few slides. So we're going to go through a little bit of detail here. Now as with any of these videos of course this is intended as general advice and this is not to be taken as planning advice for your specific circumstance. And of course it will be most helpful if you watch this video having already watched the videos on provincial disability supports which we are going to briefly review. And also if you watch the videos just on the structure of trusts that's also going to be useful. So this video is going to be tough if you're just watching it by itself, but if you can get those other videos in there, that's going to be most helpful. So what we're going to look at here is why do we need trusts at all in a disability plan? And there are a couple of different reasons here. The one we're going to focus on for starters is we have a disabled person and regardless of competency or whether that person has decision-making capability, the disabled person may be relying on provincial disability supports. And these provincial disability supports, they do vary quite a bit from province to province. But in general, they will limit your ability to use benefits, to access those benefits based on assets and income. So we're going to have both an asset and an income test here. And the problem with the asset and income tests around these provincial disability supports then is we really can't give a disabled person enough assets to live the rest of their life and they can't earn enough income to have a comfortable living without losing access to those provincial disability supports benefits. So we often have a real tough decision to make as to how we're going to address this. We'd like to have this person comfortable. We'd like to have them be able to support themselves. But in order to do this, we may end up putting them offside by giving them too much assets. Now, if this person can go to work and legitimately earn a healthy amount of income, they're going to put themselves offside for these provincial disability supports benefits as well. And good for them then they don't need those provincial disability supports. They may have other programs they can access, but they won't be able to access programs like AISH, the Assured Income for the Severely Handicapped in Alberta, or ODSP, the Ontario Disability Supports Program in Ontario. And there are similar programs in other provinces. And we're just going to look at these for a second. So AISH has fairly generous limits you can have up to $100,000 of assets and you can make between about two and three thousand dollars a month depending whether you're single or whether you're in a relationship but in that vicinity of about two to three thousand dollars a month before you're completely cut off with ODSP it's a little bit tougher ODSP you can have no more than five thousand dollars in assets and the income level is substantially lower as well the income level it depends a little bit but it's around a thousand to about fifteen hundred bucks a month depending on your circumstances so very easy to lose your H benefit very easy to lose your ODSP benefit the other consideration here is often around the ability of the disabled person to manage assets so is this person going to be able to manage assets and of course some disabled people are going to have no behavioral limitations at all they would be as capable as anybody is man of managing money and then no issue with giving them money but we may have some issues here where we need to restrict assets and access to those assets and that may come about because of a lack of competency or a lack of capacity on behalf of that disabled person and that can certainly happen so this is where we're going to employ potentially a trust now the trust what we're going to do then is we're going to give a trustee discretion 
and essentially that means we take control away from that disabled person and that may solve the control issue that control or capacity issue may not be a concern anymore and we may have it's tougher to say we may have solved the income and asset test problems although this varies from province to province So the term we use to, this, or to uh, describe this trust that's specifically designed to get past the limitations on asset and income is a Henson Trust. It's named for a girl by the name of Audrey Henson, whose father had set up Henson, sorry, whose father had set up one of these trusts for her. And what we have today is most provinces do allow, whether it's by regulation or just by administrative practice most provinces do allow the Hansen Trust now there's a little bit of gray area here it's almost certain that this wouldn't work in Quebec so holding these assets in trust probably is not going to work in Quebec and Newfoundland and Alberta are also not provinces that explicitly accept the Hansen Trust although what I have run into of late is I've seen, especially in Alberta, some lawyers starting to recommend the Henson Trust. I'm not suggesting this is acceptable or not acceptable. There is nothing in regulation in Alberta and no precedent to allow the Henson Trust. But as more and more lawyers try it, eventually we'll find out whether or not it whether or not it's actually acceptable. Alberta, you have a higher income, sorry, a higher asset test up to $100,000. So you do have some ability to work around this and there are some assets it's noteworthy that get outside these tests it varies from province to province but generally you can own a home as an example without going offside as far as the asset test rules even if we are in one of the provinces that doesn't allow the Henson Trust uh, Alberta Newfoundland or potentially Quebec an alternate solution here is potentially to consider using a trust where we have the trust set up for the benefit of the person who's taking care of the disabled person. So not to name the disabled person as a beneficiary, but rather their caregiver as a beneficiary. So there are some ways to employ trusts and some reasons to employ trust, primarily around allowing access to these provincial disability supports benefits and concerns around lack of capacity. These would be the big two reasons why we would use a trust and if you're in a province that allows the Henson Trust, that's a fairly readily, av readily available solution. And if you're in a province that doesn't allow the Henson Trust, then you may have to look at a trust set up specifically with a different caregiver as the beneficiary of that trust. And of course, there are other tools available. The Registered Disability Savings Plan provides us, except in Quebec, with the ability to generate or to build up assets and provide income without any loss of benefits. So again, let's consider that Henson Trust or possibly other trust arrangements. And there are some tax benefits as well to a trust set up on a testamentary basis, that is you die and leave assets behind in trust for a disabled person, that trust will actually continue to use the old trust rules that we're used to for testamentary trusts where it will be able to use the graduated tax rates that can create a little bit of tax efficiency of course the big downside is you have to die to set up that trust it is a testamentary trust so I hope this helps I hope this gives us a basic idea of why we would use trusts as part of a, an overall disability plan and recognize then that you could potentially have a substantial amount of assets and income here without falling offside as far as these rules go. So thank you very kindly and enjoy your continued studies. Thank you.